I thought Emerald Fennell's Saltburn was a very fun movie. The film follows Oliver, who's played by Barry Keoghan, who is an awkward kid going to Oxford, and he's invited by his classmate Felix Catton, played by Jacob Lordy, to spend a week at the Saltburn estate, his family's estate. And I thought this movie was a fun movie. It's entertaining. It isn't really a great movie. It kind of left me wanting more. You know, when I go to see a movie, I only want to be entertained, obviously. I mean, I like to think about the movies, but you go because you want to have a good time. And I did find this movie to be fun. I just think, you know, I saw it a week ago. It isn't one that has really stayed in my mind or made me think like that was incredible. Um, I want to start with the stuff I really did enjoy about this movie. And, you know, from the art to the acting, to the direction, to the writing in the story, the costume design, um, the writing isn't really that original, but it's fun. Like I was saying, you could tell everyone involved is having a fun time. I don't like to be bored and Saltburn is definitely not boring. Having said that, it's a bit long and kind of reminds me of, you know, really edgy jokes that kids make. It's kind of like the Joker movie. There's a lot of edgy scenes. And I could see people thinking that this movie has a lot to say, but really it's kind of a simplistic and really silly revenge story of obsession that is kind of like a 21st century TikTok version of like an Alfred Hitchcock movie, you know, with the edginess dialed up. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of nudity in this film, a lot of weird stuff. But in comparison to movies that can actually do that right, like I just saw Poor Things, that movie has so much nudity, so much weird stuff, but I feel like it kind of works servicing the story. It's kind of weird. This movie just feels like, like, okay. Um, you know, it really felt like this movie wanted to be as fucked up as possible while keeping that A24 aesthetic, you know, even though this was not an A24 movie. I do think a lot of what Saltburn has to offer through the film, you know, I, I like a lot of it. It starts out in 2006, which is a great choice because it allows the director to make the movie feel like it's taking place in another time. You don't have a lot of overbearing technology. You don't have cell phones, although everyone's dressed like it's the 50s um, in London. And it, it really does feel like an old timey period piece. I like a lot of the art direction choices. And, you know, I think going in, you're kind of wondering who these characters are. You kind of are interested in them. Um, they introduce Felix and Oliver really early on. And there's this good character dynamic between them. I never feel like you get enough of the two of them, honestly. Um, it's very colorful and fun to look at. And once you get to Felix's house at Saltburn, about half an hour in, the film finally, you know, feels like it's it's starting. Um, and that feels like the world building's begun. I think Rosamund Pike, they introduce her. She's very good. She's great at playing a cold, bitter woman. Richard E. Grant is really great as the father. And then there is this guy, Archie Maticue, I think I said his name right, who's in Gran Turismo, that movie that just came out. I thought he was actually really good here. In Gran Turismo, he was more just a mouthpiece for the PlayStation 4. But here he actually has something to do. And the movie, you know, never really loses that interesting tone. It, it never really feels too mysterious. It's mostly, you know, just edgy and weird. And there's a lot of sexual moments. And the whole film, you kind of know that Oliver, Barry Keegan's character, has a crush on Felix. And you get that. You get that there's this weird dynamic going on. And it's cold and they're cynical. And there's also this character who's played by Carrie Mulligan who lives in the house and she's just there for a brief part of the film and then she disappears and we're just like, what happened to Carrie Mulligan? You know she exited the film. And I just feel like this movie, it goes, kind of meanders around, you know, and, and really I just wanted this to build up the story of Felix and Oliver, but honestly that relationship doesn't feel like it's earned. It sounds weird saying this, but I feel like the movie benefited more from the cringe humor as you know, as it stands, the movie has a lot of great set pieces and it's fun, but it really does feel like it's lacking substance. Every half hour or so, Barry Keegan does something fucked up and weird, like licking a bathtub or having sex with a grave. But these are all in service of being edgy and it's not trying to move ahead the story. I think the film needs more suspense. Um, it needs more mystery. It needs more of a reason to dive into Felix and Oliver's relationship. Why is he so obsessed with him? It doesn't really explore that. It just simply goes, and I saw a review, that Jacob Elordi is so hot that, well, you might as well turn into a fucking psychopath over him. It does have some interesting moments where Oliver talks about his background, and you think you're kind of getting some backstory on him, but I think it needed more of that. And there's also a scene where Felix and Oliver drive out to the country. To me, that was the only scene that was really, like, pushing the relationship between the two, and you actually got to see this dynamic that you don't see for the rest of the movie. I, I wish we had more scenes like that. There was more suspense there, more... Um, it was more entertaining. It's kind of trying to be like the talented Mr. Ripley, but I feel like at least the talented Mr. Ripley, they kind of get to that stuff very early and there's a lot of it. This movie 
nothing really happens till very late. Most of the movie is just walking around fancy sets, talking with dialogue about super bad and watching old movies. And it's fun and interesting to see these characters be strange and cold, but at the same time, you know, oddly somewhat relatable. I just think it needed more of a middle ground. Saltburn, it's like fun smut. It's really decked out. You could tell Emerald Fennell's just having a good time, you know, especially during a party scene. Um, but what's really crazy is, like I said, the main conflict doesn't happen until 90 minutes in. So really up until that, it's just a lot of weird shit. And then once you're finally three quarters of a way into the movie, something happens that changes the entire story. And I just think it takes way too long for that to happen. It needed to do more or create more tension early on. I think that, you know, like I was saying, Mr. Ripley, the Patricia Highsmith novel and the adaptation, they lay in this dynamic about our main character and his obsession very, very early on. So that about halfway through the film, conflict comes up. And as a result, more conflict happens, but the movie can never really decide when it wants to engage in the story and when it just wants to waltz around. And as a result, not a lot happens till the end. Uh, like I said, I didn't feel totally unsatisfied. It ends in a really bizarre dancing sequence that's somewhat feels earned. And it's just the whole movie's kind of empty. Like it isn't really saying much and nothing about that surprising or deep. The movie doesn't have to be deep. You know, I don't mind what it is, but it should just have more interesting characters. You know, I think if they wanted to develop Oliver, they could have given him more weird quirks, not just a couple of sexual scenes, but maybe develop his relationship with Felix more, develop the relationship with the other characters a bit more. So it feels earned. They really do that. They do that with um, the brother character played by Archie Mattaquay and also Rosamund Pike's character. Just, I think they need a little more of that. It really just feels like a Hallmark show that has like a huge budget. And I guess that's fine. It's not awful. People enjoy it. But at the end of the day, it's not the best of the genre. It's definitely one of these style over substance films. So guys, let me know what you thought of Saltburn, if you really liked it. Um, yeah, like I said, there's movies that are just fun to watch sometimes. And yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thanks so much for watching.